Moving in together is often the first step towards a much bigger commitment in a relationship. So what happens when the person that you've moved in with is committed to driving you crazy? On today's case, Mr. Salvatierra says it didn't take him long to figure out that he'd made a big mistake when he allowed his girlfriend, Ms. Turco, to move into his apartment. He says she promptly slept with his friend, trashed his home, and abused him financially. Now he's looking to get both his money and his sanity back. Ms. Turco says she wants to save her relationship and claims that it's Mr. Salvatierra who's the real problem. She says he has gone out of his way to gaslight her and make her seem like the crazy one when he's the one who is constantly sending her mixed signals. She says their relationship isn't over and she owes him nothing. Let's hear their case. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Starr presiding. Your Honor, this is the case of Salvatierra versus Turco. Thank you. Mr. Salvatierra and Ms. Turco. Mr. Salvatierra, you say this relationship has been a disaster from the beginning and you want out. You say Ms. Turco is a compulsive liar with a drinking problem who had you living in filth and routinely cheated on you. Yes, Your Honor. And Ms. Turco, you say you're here today because you're getting mixed signals from Mr. Salvatierra and his words don't always match his actions. You say it hurts you to your core when he calls you, quote, the worst mistake of his life, but still calls you to be intimate. You say you want to save this relationship, but you really need to know where you stand. Yes, Your Honor. So let's figure out how this came together and how it broke apart. Mr. Salvatierra, why are we here in court today? Um, well, I'm trying to get some closure uh, from everything, and one of the things I want to really just to move on is for her to pay me back a lot of the money that she owes me. Mm. I'm not asking for the full amount that she owes me. I'm just asking for $4,000. Because if we were to tally up everything that she truly owes me, it'd be a lot more than that. Okay, Mr. Salvatieri, I know that you were together for two and a half years. You actually lived together for a year, a little bit over a year. Mm -hmm. Ms. Turco, Mr. Salvatieri says that was a disaster. What do you say? It was a disaster, but it wasn't all on me. As far as the cheating goes, it was when I first met him. Um, we weren't in a relationship at that time. I was just staying with him occasionally. I went through a split at that time with my son's dad of 10 years, and I just needed a place to stay. And when I met him walking our dogs, he, we exchanged phone numbers um, to see if, you know, if when he's walking his dog. Wait a minute, Ms. Ms. Turco, I'm, I'm gonna get into all of the facts of the case, uh -huh. but I wanna know how you respond to his allegation that the relationship really was a disaster from the beginning. It became a disaster. It wasn't a disaster in the beginning, but mm -hmm. um, he pursued me, he was very persistent. Mm -hmm. um, when I first met him, he texted me and he's like, I wanna take you out for dinner and I declined. And um, I said, but I'm okay with the dogs meeting. And I said, and I told him, I'm like, I'm a hot mess right now. I'm, I have a lot going on in my life. So and you're basically saying he knew what he was getting into when he first started. Yes. So now now we go back. <laughs> Mr. Salvatierra, you brought the case. So she do slept... you consider that to have been casual dating or casual. in a relationship? Casual dating. Casual dating. Yeah. And you agree, Ms. Turco, it yes. was casual dating. Yes. Think friends with benefits kind of thing. Yes, Your Honor. Yeah, fair enough? Fair, fair enough, but, you know, it was a pursuit of being in an actual relationship. Got it. You were, all, we, you were getting to know each other yeah. and doing what grown folk do. Yeah. Fair enough. But she later uh, slept with a friend of mine. Wow. Uh, she had been and continued sleeping with him up until the point she was moving in. When did you find out that she was being intimate with your friend also? Two weeks after she moved in. So for her to say that we weren't a thing just yet, if we weren't a thing, we wouldn't be moving in together. And that relationship, did you find out, actually started prior? Yeah. At that point, I've, you know, I was helping her out when she was moving in because she had just lost her job. And it would make more sense for her to be living with me. And she, uh, when she, as soon as she gets a job, we can split rent and all that. And we were, she was basically spending almost every single night. At in your my house? Place. Yeah. 
and you figured, you know what, you're here all the time anyway. Might as well. It's okay, because we we're moving in that direction. Yeah. And... But, Ms. Turco, you seem to think it was not as committed as Mr. Salvatierra feels. Correct. Why don't you explain? So, I didn't move in until about maybe six months to eight months after. Um, yes, I was spending the night there. His friend only lived there for two weeks and then moved away to Texas. I only slept with him twice. Um, and that's when things were just casual. We were not in a committed relationship. Um, so, once wait a I minute. Moved... You know what? That's kind of... I know. That's kind of tacky. I know. I mean, honestly, I'm, you know, I'm trying to... I'm trying to think of myself, like, how do you sleep in one bed one night and then turn around and sleep in the bed in the same house the next night but a different one? That's kind of... It got, it got more interesting when I started seeing a text from a lot of people. I didn't look at them, and then one kind of stuck out because it was uh, my friend's phone number, and it said, hey, want to join me in the shower before I go to work? She's like, yeah, be there in five. In your house? Wow. Miss Turco, that's just tacky. I mean, whew. Okay. Me and his friend, I would see him when I was there. We never, like, would have, like, conversations. Like, it was just very casual. But, yes, it was tacky on my end. Yeah. But at that time, I thought, I mean, I considered myself single, so... But you're not single living in his house. I mean, you can consider yourself single. Honestly, you could, in your own place have somebody come in at 2 o'clock in the afternoon and have another person come in at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. My only suggestion would be you shower in between. But that's your business. Mm -hmm. But when you in his house... He put up surveillance cameras in the house. Because I have it, strange men coming to my house all they the time. Would ne His dog would never allow another man in the house. He didn't have to, because you had homegrown, you know what. The dog didn't need to bite a stranger because his Uncle Larry was over there. But then it's like, why were you still with me? And, um... I don't know why you I... all were still together. So, Mr. Salvatierra is saying that in the, at least in the beginning of the relationship, um, we know you cheated with a friend and he had suspicions that there were other men that were involved. There were, um, there were sorry, Judge, there was more than suspicions. There was an older gentleman in his 50 that would come to the house and text message her, oh, I'm here to rescue you from him. Because he was very controlling. He put up surveillance cameras in the house. Because I would have it, strange men coming to my house all they the wouldn't, time. His dog would never allow, his dog sweet but he would never allow another man in the house. And I wouldn't have... He didn't have to, because you had homegrown, you know what. He didn't need to bring it... The dog didn't need to bite a stranger. Why, why do they know so, where we live? Because his Uncle Larry was over there. But then it's like, why were you still with me? And, um... I don't know why you I, all were still together. I was... I, I asked her to leave several times. I kind of kicked her out a couple times. I tried multiple times to get her to go. And, I mean, the, the place was a disaster. It was filthy. It was disgusting. I worked 12 hours a day, and I'd come home to try to do some cleaning. And meanwhile, she was unemployed and doing nothing at home. Why was the house filthy when you were home all day, ma'am? It wasn't filthy. It was not very clean when I first moved in. Um, he's very unorganized. Why um, were there so many dog poop and pee everywhere? Well, no. My dog goes on potty pads, so my dog was an issue. His dog is a large pit bull that I can't walk. The first time I tried to walk it, he threw me down to the ground, dragged me, my shoulders he... were bleeding, I had a fat lip. So we made a decision that we were, I wasn't going to walk his dog the, when he the was gone. Blue, my dog, Blue, he's a, he is the friendliest, well-trained pit bull you'll ever meet. He would never poop or pee in the house. I can guarantee that right now. If my dog poos in the house, it's, it would probably be my fault. If I go to work for 12 hours a day, I'm you got, pretty sure... You have I'd... to make arrangements for him to be walked... Exactly. ...or expect it to be a disaster area exactly. when you Exactly. I don't mind cleaning up after the dog. So what's going on that this was I... not happening while you all were living together? I don't know. Uh, I would come home. Uh, like I mentioned, she does have a drinking problem. Oh, I would my. come home, and I couldn't even walk 
barefoot in my own house because it was, you would either step on dog feces or urine. Um, it was a disaster. Uh, Is she he would... telling the truth, Miss Darko? He is not telling the truth. <laughs> he has a new dog now, and he's not training the dog. There is pee all that over his house. That just sounds nasty. Y'all just, ooh. <laughs> no, uh, okay, so I do have a young dog that I recently got. Um, he, he is having a little trouble potty training. I am working with him. She did stay with me not too long ago, I think. About... But I thought y'all had broken up and you finally got her out of the house and now you got I... a new house? <laughs> yeah. Why is she back in the house? I just feel like he's gaslighting me. I know that Ms. Turco says that you send mixed signals. You've sent mixed signals while I'm sitting here. When I told her that I was moving out and she's not coming with me, she got upset. She calls me up, says that, I gotta tell you something, I'm kind of a, you know, I don't know how you're gonna take this, if you're gonna be scared or not. And she said, I'm pregnant. If you'd like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Miss the show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and follow us on social media for exclusive content. Y'all went back to friends with benefits? I can take it or leave it, but pretty much, yeah. No, but you took it. Yeah, I did take it, and I'm not... <laughs> I'm not gonna deny that, but... Uh... No. I this kinda... sounds, this sounds literally nuts. I, it gets... Yeah, so we've, like, never broken up. We've just, like, not living together I anymore. Moved... But I didn't go, I did not go to his house to do any things with friends with benefits. He asked me to go there to watch his dogs because he was going out of town. They're... So, at this point, he's making me out to be the bad guy, but I have his house key. I have access to his place at any time. But why would you give her your house okay, key when so you said you did everything to get her out of the house? I did everything I did everything to get her out of the house. First of all, when we were living together, she would watch the dogs when I would have to go out of town. I am very protective of my dog. I love him very much. But you just said that this is somebody you can't rely on. She is my last and absolute last resort whenever I do. I do have other people in play. It, I did give her a key and an access to the building for that one time that I did need her to watch him. Mr. Salvatore, mm -hmm. I know that Ms. Turco says that you send mixed signals. You've sent mixed signals while I'm sitting here. I understand. You started with me telling me how you wanted her out of your life, out of your house, and you want your money back that you've spent. Mm -hmm. Yet I now find out that you are in a whole new place, you even got a whole new dog, but you still are giving her access to every part of your life and hitting it every now and again. Did you hear that, Robert? Yep. Okay. All right, so uh, giving her an access key to my building does not guarantee that she'll find the apartment. <laughs> it, is a, it is a maze and for her... So what are you hoping that she does not? <laughs> <laughs> no, but you she... have to explain to me why that is relevant to the conversation. Because I actually I do... do listen to the things that I, uh... you say. I, yeah, I hope you appreciate that. I understand. I actually do care about what you're saying. I understand. Uh, she she doesn't live in the same city as me, and I do regret that we did hook up recently. And believe me, I I do do want her to move on, and so I want to move on to myself. When's the last time you hooked up? Uh, Don't fib. I'm, not, I'm trying to remember. It was probably like a month ago or two. Ms. Turco? I don't believe it was a month ago. It was longer. Um, we're still together, but I don't like to be intimate with him just because um, I'm just not on that level right now with him. I'm still mad with him. I just feel like he's gaslighting me. And uh, um, Why do you say he's gaslighting you? Just because he's making me out to be this horrible person. This Cheating, yes, that was bad, but this happened two and a half years ago. And if he took you back, then it's supposed to be done, right? At one point, right before I moved out, I made a choice that I wasn't gonna be intimate with her anymore. It had gone on for a few months, and then when I told her that I was moving out and she's not coming with me, um, she got upset, understandably so. Uh, like, I wanna say a few weeks after that, she calls me up, says that, oh, 
I got, I, I got to tell you something. I'm kind of a, sh you know, I don't know how you're going to take this, if you're going to be scared or not. And she said, I'm pregnant. What? Uh, you're pregnant? No, no, she wasn't. She isn't. But no, and she I did never was. But she wait a minute, wait a minute. I was pregnant six years ago with my son. Yeah, she did you Did you tell the man you were pregnant? No. I'm confused. I'm really confused. She told Either that happened or it didn't. It did, ma'am. She told me she was pregnant when I told her how far along you think you are. She said a couple months. And I said, well, I know it's not mine, because last time was like five months ago or something like that, when she told me that. So I was like, whew, dodged a bullet on that one. And Ms. Turco, do you have no recollection of this? No, I have no reason to say that. Well, she was... She's constantly drinking all the time. Like, no, oh, I was drinking still. excessively when I was living with him full-time um, because that was his way of, like, keeping me in the house. No, Controlling me. Mr. Salvatierra, I have to tell you, Lord knows you may have spent money over the course of this relationship, mm -hmm. but you're gonna have to chalk that one up because friends with benefits cost money. Sorry. <laughs> well, it, was, uh, it wasn't spending money on her. It was loans that I gave her. So do you have any documentation that it was loans? Yes, ma'am. And Ms. Turco, do you agree that you owe him money based on loans? No, I never asked for a loan. He just was nice at that point, and he's helping me with my car. Just since I wasn't Ms. working. Mr. Salvatierra, did you say the, this is a loan? She would say, can I borrow money to pay my car? Can I borrow $1,500 to pay my legal fees? She would ask me, can I borrow money for... And what would be your what answer? I would reluctantly say no, yes, because if I didn't, she would not have a car or insurance. And she asked me for a straight-up week for that $1,500 that she asked for, for her legal fees. It was... Did you get a piece of paper that said, because you were so hesitant, Ms. Turco, I will lend you $1,500, but I expect it to be paid back. Do I... you have a document that says that? I, I think I had one. I lost it in the move. I did have her... I, I think happened. I did put it in, in video, but I, lo I since then switched phones. I swear to you, I, that's... Who would give out... $1,500 to a legal office and say that, oh, I'm just giving money away like that. That does... That makes no sense. No, but what makes no sense is for you to continue to do the exact same thing again and again. The definition of insanity is to do the same thing over and over and expect a different result. I agree. You and Ms. Turco are toxic together. You don't have a real relationship. There was cheating from day one. There's been no trust. There's no foundation to this relationship. Mm -hmm. You like the benefits that she provides on occasion, and you like the comfort that he provides with a little cash on the side. If that's the relationship that makes you both happy, go with God. But otherwise, get out of my courtroom. You don't get any money. You need to take care of your own bills. What kind of sucker was he? Talk about getting beat up and taking advantage of. I mean, I would have walked out after she slept with the roommate. With the roommate, not just it slept been with over, my friend. Over, gone. What in my house? So you go from this bed to that bed? Mm -hmm. I hope she took a shower. I mean, <laughs> that was just nasty. It was nasty from the beginning. Uh, nasty from word one. I mean, she just totally took him for a ride. So he need to chalk that four thousand mm -hmm. dollars up to. Um, I hope those benefits were decent. <laughs> <laughs>